Hello, my name is David from the tech support team here at Lad Tech, and in this video we're going to be going over the schedule editor guide. How do you edit your schedule on a day-to-day -day basis? Now we're looking at our sample training system schedule here under the work schedule tab and the weekly shifts view for the current week and we're seeing some openings here on the schedule for today and we see some other pending transactions with the little green a on there some pending signups and vacation and such so we need to make a change to the schedule so we're going to edit the schedule and if you had need to do that that's going to the schedule editor and go into the hourly editor now I can go into it directly from here and it will take me to today's date. And just so you know, there are other options in order to edit the schedule. If you want to edit the one particular schedule, you can hover over any date and edit the schedule and so forth to just go to it directly. So we're going to schedule editor and the hourly editor. Now there are multiple elements looking at this screen where there's two halves of the screen top and bottom uh, divided by this pane here. We're looking at the hourly editor and it says we're showing five of seven schedules here on the top half of the screen using the scroll bar here on the right. Now we can edit what we're looking at the screen just like we can anywhere else in the system using the view filter options and the edit link and you can pick and choose exactly which work schedules you need to see. So let's just concentrate on the top two here, administrators in Abbey Road, and click apply. Gives us a lot less space to work with. We don't have to scroll up and down. Now we're seeing each of the schedules. We're seeing what they're called. We see we're on the one current date of Wednesday, October 19th. We're looking at one 24 hour period of time based on when your schedule starts. So in this case, 7 a.m to 7 a.m. the next day. You'll see the daybreak at the midnight hour, of course. You'll see the positions within each schedule and what they're called and who is working here in blue. You'll see the officer in charge, duty officer, and so forth. You'll notice these selector buttons next to each of the positions, and this is what you're gonna select when you wanna work with that particular position. And we're selecting the duty officer here on the Abbey Road Station. And what that does is reflect below here in the member availability section, the list of members that are qualified and have permission to work that duty officer schedule on Abbey Road according to their own member profile and their positions. And it shows us their corresponding schedule over the exact same range of time from seven to seven the next morning. And you'll see there's a whole list of members here that you can scroll. Now, if I went to, say, the officer in charge position, you'll notice the screen refreshed there and we get a different list of names of those people who can be the officer in charge for the day. Let's go back to the duty officer here. We notice here that it's sorted by how available everybody is. So the people floating to the top are the most available people. And we notice for Anthony here, there is a pending time off request here that we as admins can process to approve or deny. And then these folks are wide open on their schedule. But as we scroll down the list to the bottom, we're gonna to start to see some people here that are not so available because they're already on the schedule over whatever range of time. If we go ahead and take this time off request for Anthony and review it and then say approve that time off, you'll notice Anthony then comes off the schedule. This is a white open space, which then shows as a purple open shift on the work schedules. And now we can select it here as we did before and now choose another member to plug in to work for that shift. And based on whatever criteria you might need, you can say choose Christopher's name and choose his name here, which then fills in the information along the bottom here. You can even choose a member's name from this drop down list. We're going to put Christopher on from seven to seven the next day under the time type of regular. If it falls under a different category, you could choose it now or switch it later and then just simply click add. That does not trigger any event other than putting Christopher on the schedule. If you need to notify him later of putting him on the schedule in that fashion, you would have to send him a message outside this. You can then manipulate the schedule as you wish after everybody's on the shifts here. You can see the little box with the arrow next to everybody's name. You can just hover over that with your mouse and you get some options here, such as delete shift. So as simply as you could add a shift, you could certainly delete it 
And are you sure? Yes. Or say it gets to Wednesday here and Jared called in sick. Here you have the option of being the administrator and submitting time off on their behalf. So if Jared called in sick, you could click submit time off, go to sick leave. It would automatically record those hours, approve that time off, and Jared would then come off the schedule with automatically approved sick leave time, which then you can see here at the bottom that these are the least available members now because Anthony has approved vacation. Jared now has sick leave for the day. You can choose the latter position here, and you'll notice some options here in your members of availability. Your members may have submitted their availability prior to this time, and you as an admin are building the schedule, and you can see who floats to the top. In this case, Seth is actually the most available person because he's already preset that he's available to work that day. So since we're choosing the latter position here on Abbey Road, Seth is qualified to be there. He's let us know that he's available to work and I can actually choose his name and then place him on the schedule based on that availability that he's given to us. And your other members would then show up with their availability across the different hours as they set it. You can certainly manipulate the schedule itself as you wish after it's been put up here. You'll notice on the left and right of each of these shifts as I'm hovering my mouse, the little blue arrows. You can actually take either side of those. Those are drag and drop features. You can actually take either side with your mouse and hold it and grab it and drag it to adjust the shift accordingly to where it needs to fall. So if Seth is only going to work the first half of the day, I can just drag his shift to be stop at 7 p.m and then I can choose that particular position, take another name, such as Steven here, and plug him into the second half of the day and add him and he will work the second half of the day. You can do that with any of these shifts accordingly and just adjust as needed. Or you could even pick up a shift using just grabbing the middle of any shift and dropping them on a different shift or even a different schedule. So let's say we want to move Seth to the EMT position here. We can actually just drop him there. Or you'll notice I'll try to put him in the duty officer spot here and it won't let me. That's because he doesn't have permission to be a duty officer. You can also take people from other schedules and move them down as needed around the different shifts for the day. You can also classify the shifts in other categories. I mentioned the time types down here when you were adding a shift. You can also change the category of a time type on the fly. Again, hover the box next to their name and you can change their time type. And let's say that's an overtime shift. And now it's classified as an overtime shift. And on the reporting side of things, Matt's hours on this shift for this time will be classified as overtime. And you'd be able to report that to your payroll folks uh, using that classification within the reports. You'll notice up here this grayed out area called blocked time. This is a tool for you to utilize within the system in order to block out the hours that you don't need or want for any shift on any given day. Think of block time as just another member in your system that takes the hours that you don't need, that you want to cover up as not being open. So in this case, if you have one admin on for the day and you just need one and you don't need an open position here listed as an, another admin from seven to three uh, and to alleviate confusion uh, in order for your members not to think that that's an open shift they can sign up for, you can actually take the block time and just scroll over and cover it up. You'll notice uh, you can also add block time, as I said, for any other member. Uh, let's say we don't need a duty officer on Abbey Road for the day. We can actually highlight that particular shift. Your block time member is just part of your drop down here right at the top. Like I said, schedule block time like you would any other member. And just add, and now you've added block time, and you can, of course, drag and drop accordingly to block out the hours that you need. You'll notice the staff counts here listed. That's a tool for you to utilize uh, for minimum staffing to get at a glance on the schedule for the day over whatever range of your shifts or hours that can be adjusted. You'll see how many people are on the schedule for any given time. So you'll see over these four or five hours that there are four 
people working and so forth. If we took Steven and deleted his shift, these numbers would then, of course, change to three on shift, and you would make sure that you have enough on staff for any given range of time. Lots of other tools you can utilize in order to get people onto the schedule. You'll notice down here some other columns here, one labeled calculator and member information. These are tools that you can use. The calculator is going to display a number of hours. You get to determine what those hours represent. So you can see 72 listed next to Sue. Well, what does that mean? Well, you get to set those again via your own filters in the edit link here. Now the bottom half of the screen refers to bottom half of this box. On the top you chose what work schedules you're going to work with. And don't forget here you can actually filter by uh, employee type if you want to just show your full-time members versus part-time and so forth. You have the option there. The member availability is referring to this bottom member availability section here and you'll notice calculator referring to the values for this calculator column. And then we're going to take a look at member info too. You can see what hours do I want to display? How many hours for the week, the current week, the current month, year, year to date, maybe for the pay period. You want to see how many hours for the pay period across all schedules, or maybe just one schedule. And I want to see a total number of hours, and maybe you want to break it down into overtime in total. Or maybe you needed to break it down by time type, and you want to see how many regular hours and overtime hours broken out into their own columns. And then the member info column, you get to bring in some information from their member profile to help you evaluate who to put on the system. And you'll notice here we have date of hire. Maybe you need to determine who gets a shift based on seniority. Or maybe you have some other values stored within the system, such as the date of their last overtime shift worked, or a priority number to put people in a sort. And then you can apply that information and you'll notice here you get a column for each of those values. Here's your regular time hours. And you can sort on that column, clicking on the column header. And if you do a descending sort, you're going to see who has the most regular hours. And if there are any overtime hours, they'd be listed here. You could sort by date of hire. So if you need to see who is the highest in seniority, if they're all filled in there. And you'll notice the little yellow pencil now on the member information that you get to change. That means and you can edit that field. And if this date of hire is incorrect, or if you happen to know what da Kyle's date of hire is, you can actually go and enter that in and save it. And then that saves that information on his profile right from this screen. Same with last OT worked or priority number. If you need to sort based on that particular number, Once, if all of them are filled in, you'd be able to sort and get an accurate count of where they fall in the priority or the date of the last overtime worked. So if we say took somebody from this list and put them on the schedule, we can then change their date of the last overtime work to the day that we're working on here. And it would save so that the next time we go to another day and sort that it will have that new value in there and essentially drop to the bottom of the list. You can also take a look at people's hours and schedule. If you're looking at this number and say Jeff has 144 hours, I'm wondering what's going on there. You can look next to Jeff's name and click this purple white icon in order to get a quick look at that person's schedule. And then you'll see that open in a new window here without leaving the previous screen. And you can get a quick look at Jeff's schedule on a monthly basis and see where he's working as a whole. You can also see their availability if you need to as well as a whole. Now you can also process signups from within here. I have a couple examples. We're going to jump to the 22nd here and look at EMT and hire. And you'll notice here that for this particular shift it's open and we've sent out a find coverage alert and members have come back in and signed up for the open shift that we let them know about. And you can see they stack up here based on sorting by availability. They're the most available person to work there because they're signing up for the shift itself. So we see Seth and Joe 
They have both signed up for that particular shift, and now we determine who gets the shift based on whatever our criteria is. Let's say we pick Joe because he doesn't have as many hours as Seth, and we want to just even that out a little bit. We would actually take that sign up, and we could approve it. And what happens at that point is Joe gets a notification letting him know that his sign up has been approved and he is going to be working that day. And now Seth and his sign up has been automatically canceled because the time is no longer available and he got a notification indicating just that. And the sign up happens to be canceled right at the same time you approve the other. That all happens at the same time. As you're putting people on the schedule, if you have work limits set in place, you'll get those warnings and as an admin, you'll be able to override them if need be. If they signed up for a shift and it just showed and required their approval, it would let you know if they're say working more hours in a week than they necessarily need to or if you're tracking how many hours they're working in a row, you'll also get those work limit prompts on the schedule as you're working with it. So a good method uh, as well to work with the schedule is to have this screen open as you're building your schedule day to day and maybe open another tab or another window that shows the work schedule as a whole and you can refresh that as you go to see it as a whole to make sure it's all falling together as you had hoped. Or you can be looking at your availability screen uh, as a grid as a whole to see everybody's availability all at once at that time. So please as admins you can configure this schedule editor screen for the hourly editor any way that you wish whatever works best for you don't be afraid to navigate around check your edit filters make sure everything's in line with how you would like it you can save these settings in your view filter options and save preset preset views for yourselves to make your uh, workday more efficient so if you have any questions please call us anytime you have free unlimited tech support and training you can call or email us anytime here at Aladtech. Thank you for listening.